dear teachers. Hi, hello, hello, hello. I don't know if you can see me, so please, if you do, do talk to me, like, please put plus to the chat box. If not, please just tell me, like, if, the, if there's nothing there. So, I'm looking here because I've got the chat here. And that's why, let's see, what is up? Aha, so you hear me and that's everything fine. Hello, hello, my dear friends. Hello from Khmelnytsky. Hi, 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 hello. I haven't been here for quite a long time, so you see like a little change in the image. So like I've got a little bit of glasses, but in case you don't know who I am, I am Yevgenia Kostenko, certified teacher of English here going on and like freelance online teacher right now, currently since COVID started and like the teacher training by the call of the heart. So, and I do hope that you will spend a wonderful time today with me. You will hear some interesting information a little bit more theoretical. Some of them will be more practical, but you will see everything that will be like connected to the distance connection there. So like to the distant interaction with the students for this part, uh, for this part. Right. So we're going to talk with you about distance learning, teaching and teaching right now and in the COVID. Uh, what are the interaction patterns? I hope that I will open for you some more interaction patterns that are out there and some also practical tips on the implementation there. So, uh, yeah, so like, unfortunately, I will be like that. <laughs> so, and let it be here. As we talk with you, I want you to remember that all the time we've got like some short in attention span, sometimes longer attention span. You have had already today like about two lectures. Uh, so like one is about Norok, the second one is about other Nush, uh, wonderful new Ukrainian school uh, devices and also websites. So take a look at what you might be. Today, during my session, you will be probably like that or probably like that. But I want to create something more connected with the smiles on your face and that we will have a little bit more interaction to this point. So, basically, when we're talking with you right now about the distance learning and about everything, we need to remember we are living in the emer state of emergency, so we have to have not only the classroom rules, I mean like during the online school rules, I mean the, also the rules for yourself. So my call to you, my dear teachers, my dear colleagues, if you have the air alert right now in your uh, district, in your oblast or in your region, please go to the shelter or at least to the corridor with the phone or with the laptop, the one that you have. Uh, I'm a very irresponsible teacher, so I'm not going to do it. So please don't do be like that because you have to show the example to your students there. So like you have to show what you, what you need to do in this situation. So what I mean by this, so like during the Zoom class or the, during the uh, meet in your like online classes, I don't know what you're using, I'm using Zoom, so I'm talking about that. You have your own rules there about raising hand, about the emojis, about backgrounds and stuff, but you also have to be alert about the air alert system too. So please be aware of that and make sure that you are safe today as well as during all the period of time until the victory out there. Well, of course, and later, but still it's out there. So, as we're jumping over with you through the classroom rules and everything, it's like the management, you know, that it's quite important there. We are doing with you not only the distance education for this part. So, like, we are talking with you about something more specific and something more precise. In the chat box, I'd like you right now to guess what do these three letters stand for? So ERT, this is actually the uh, term for something that is connected to our activities with you today and throughout like this period of time. So please, in the chat box, try to guess what is E, what is R, what is T. It's the abbreviation, obviously. So yeah, I've got you here, waiting for you here. Okay. So please, 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 like just your, any guess, like ERT, I don't know, like maybe it's like some TV or something like that. Uh -huh, something with the result. Okay, probably. Hmm. Anything else? Anything else? Please, please, please. Go on. I know it's an evening. 
So R stands for remote, E R teaching. Teaching is right. Remote is right. <laughs> so ladies, yes and gentlemen, right educate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Enjoy result teaching. Well, it's actually a great start for the for some school there. So like enjoy result teaching. It sounds like you know like a motto even. English result teacher probably yes so as well. Right our rules you think mm hmm could be could be well everything is connected to the rules english remote teacher very close english rule education rules teaching education result teaching well yeah we are actually are going for the results training could be well training and teaching there entertaining for some kind too as well uh, basically, I will not torture you anymore. This is emergency remote teaching. That's what we are doing with you right now. When we are at the state of war, when Ukraine is at the state of war, we are not just providing distance education. We are providing emergency remote edu education. We are providing remote teaching, but in the state of emergency. So we know that, for example, our student is right now in Khmelnytsky region and he's got the air alert and he's sitting in the basement with his grandma with the book as well so and you cannot actually just stay by the plan of your lesson you have to be flexible and this is what uh, is one of the differences from the ERT and the distance learning and distance teaching is that in the ERT we have to be a little bit more flexible and this is what the war has taught us and this is what we're going to talk with you today how to be more flexible how to have more interaction with the emergency remote teaching as well so as we're talking about that emergency remote teaching and learning they are quite similar to the distance one however it's got some uh, peculiarities as you can see on this scheme we've got with you a lot of like weird stuff there so like enrichment not weird but like basic i mean enrichment evaluation discussion and instruction and explanation all of them are interconnected some of them have very similar points for example like we have to have whatsapp discussion we have to have some other evaluation discussion there so like in the whatsapp or any other things it's not only about whatsapp it's also about some just connection to the chat box with your students with everyone around as you can see, if we're talking about discussion, it's like live discussion. It's like when we're talking to each other face to face. So we are using Zoom, Google Meet, I don't know, Microsoft Teams, whatever you are using for, like what, what is more uh, providing to you. The same is for the other social media. I know that there are some uh, teachers that are using Discord. I'm personally don't use it. I'm, I'm not using it, but still there. Google Classroom for evaluation, some other evaluation and assessment facilities that you just listened in the previous webinar so probably it could be there too assignments from the lecturer from the teacher some some precise tasks there and also what i wanted to say that sometimes emergency remote learning and emergency remote teaching are different because it could be asynchronous what i mean by that the breaking in the internet the breaking in the connection and suddenly the t uh, the student is disconnected from your lesson but they are they say that they cannot be connected but they can get the links from you and you can send them the same plan the same links that you have there just in the uh, chat box the one that you have to be there so just please remember in the terms of distance learning and ERT we are a little bit more flexible and we provide more blended kind of learning i think that you have all faced all uh, this particular feature when we are having like for example one student in czech republic the other student in poland third student in kiev region somewhere and everyone has different connections and you plan to play i don't know like some tests on no rock or maybe quizlet or maybe something else and you cannot do that that's why it's really important to plan for yourself aha if it works then we're doing this if it doesn't work we're doing this in the individual one so we have to be flexible in all this part there in the synchronous we have immediate reaction in the asynchronous we can have a little pause and give them some time for self-regulating for the speed of learning and everything and it depends on a lot of things there so also on the psychological state of the student also on the uh 
result and on the task that you have set them for before that. Of course, in the synchronous ERT, it's much more interaction and much more uh, fun than in the asynchronous. However, it could be in the asynchronous as well for different kinds of things there. So, but we have to blend them together and remember that we have to take advantage of both of these approaches. So please remember about this precisely. When we talk about the interaction patterns, I'm pretty sure all of you are aware about the student-teacher interaction, student-student interaction, student-students interaction, right? So like in this way. I really like this scheme, but this scheme was connected not to the student-teacher, it was connected to the student game or player game thing there. Why is it so important? Because the game, as you can see, is considered like a task. The game is considered like together there and the game is like around. And we, the teachers, we are surrounding our students and we are looking at them all the time. You know, like even if they think that, that we are not watching, we are still watching there. I will explain wh what I mean by this later a little bit. So you can see that we have got the connection between students and the teachers, students and one student, many st students with many students, one group interconnecting together. These are just simple parts. But what I want to accent a little bit more is about this particular thing, student versus task or students versus task. So you can, it's uh, quite similar to PBL. Yeah, so like, but I still want to put it as the interaction pattern here, because right now in our reality, in the distance and remote learning, sometimes this is the interaction that they get. Sometimes there are two sisters, sister and brother sitting and doing the task that they can do right now, but they cannot interconnect with you, like with the camera or something like that. But you hear that they are doing stuff there. Or if you have the individual student who fell out of the lesson or he dropped out or something, he needs some task, you send it to him and then instantly you can see result in the Google Classroom, on the Word wall, anywhere that you have out there. So it's a lot of interaction patterns there. These ones, like, I just want to accent a little bit more on this part. When we talk with you about all these, like, interactions, students need to feel that they are heard and it's, like, extremely important for that matter. We talk with you right now about the first need for general recognition. This is the need that must be met in every single lesson. Because, you know, like sometimes students and there you can see, like, um, I have had the wonderful discussion with some of the students out there in one of the state schools in my city in Poltava and they have provided me some feedback about like what is happening, like what is the interaction that they had and what is the type that they thought must be a little bit changed. So one of them is the need of general recognition. A lot of teachers are tired, a lot of teachers are burnt out and it's quite natural and it's quite all right to be burnt out, to be tired. However, you see what the, uh, the student told me? I had to drop out of the lesson because I was ignored by the teacher. The person wanted to interact, the person wanted to be uh, noticed, but they couldn't. And that's very unfortunate. So, and that's why we as teachers must understand, aha, uh -huh, so here we see that one, we see that one. Even when not all students can answer, you can just say, well, Natasha, thank you, I see your point, can you write it down to me, or can you send the photo to me of the task, or can you uh, pro, uh, share with the other partner somewhere there in the breakout room, or something like that. You have to recognize even the, like a little effort, and then the interaction between you, between class and between the students, it will be much, much more productive for that matter of fact. If we're talking about the second one, it's instructional communication. Obviously, this is like we are asking questions, ICQs, CCQs, depending on the tasks out there. But if we're talking about the asynchronous part even, so you have got another comment. We can ask any question we have and he answers gladly and patiently. It's very nice. So it means if you are open to communication with your students, it's great. Of course, you have to put some boundaries. So, for example, you can text me starting from, I don't know, like four till nine in the uh, nine o'clock in the evening. And uh, like you will be openly answering everything because like to get the messages at two o'clock in the morning, it's not very fun, isn't it? So like that's why. Uh, please be aware that they might ask some instructional communication, communication questions as well. What I mean. For example, 
I had a group of elementary uh, teenagers, like they were like, I think about 10 of them. It was last year and it was really fun when we were discussing, you know, like, I don't remember. I think it was the beginning of present perfect. I explained there was a scheme. They start doing the task. And then one of the students just simply asks, can you please explain to me one more time? Of course, I asked somebody to, to explain it to her first, but then she asked like, no, please, can you, can it be you? And I start again with absolutely same words, with absolutely same schemes, and she gets it. So probably sometimes students just need a little bit more extra attention from you, a little bit more extra thing there. So it's just like one part of it. If we're talking with you, about the guidance and facilitation this is like uh, it's actually connected to the question that right now i see in the chat uh, that you are kind of leading the students through that so like there was an assignment in the course that i found difficult and spoke to the teacher in the response she extended the deadline for all of us so for instance if you have got the primary school right so like in the, the primary class they are very young learners so young learners you have to guide them you have to facilitate them please remember that online classes for the children must be much more active than during the students class students in the classroom there so you have to guide them through you have to go through the first point then to the second point and please remember stirring and also calming activities again stirring and calming activities and you guide them through how to do this with the primary students you have to set the routine so that's the most important part and if you set the routine they feel safe they feel that you facilitate them with the project that you guide them through the project but they are doing the project and learning the language by themselves so that's why it's quite important for this matter if we're talking about the other stuff there so like the fourth point is going to be the social intimacy so like i really like this point about the social intimacy because we start with small icebreakers like compliment each other we start the lesson with the short introductions for about everyone's day you can spice it up you can take like different questions like why are you proud of yourself today why today was so amusing what is your apricot what is your onion for today and it's like absolutely different things there and it's not only social intimacy you must be genuine interested in your students I understand it when there are 30 students sitting at you like looking at you not even turning on the cameras but by which I absolutely I'm absolutely against you have to turn the cameras on like when you are having the on online classes otherwise it's not happening at least it's the rule in my uh, classroom out there so and we have to give them a little comment oh sasha you had a little haircut it looks nice on you oh you got a new hamster my dear so this is cute it's sitting behind you of course don't make it last for 15 minutes for 10 minutes for like an hour of your lesson or something just a little comment and believe me when you are showing the interest when you are genuine with your students they will be gladly listening to you the attention will be spread a little bit more and if you actually open just a little bit glimpse of your personal life then it will be just fine for you so like because they will understand that you're a real person too and they will listen to you even more than to the other teachers of other subjects there so that's why social intimacy is quite 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 important for this if we're talking with you about instructional support this is kind of actually connected to the q and a part but in here we're talking about more instructions to the precise tasks i'm not scared to ask the questions so like sometimes i think like we all have such colleagues or we had such teachers there we who we actually were scared to ask and it was you know like did you get it do you understand and you're like yes so like so something like that can happen and because like brains of the children brains of the teenagers brains of the adult students might switch off maybe they were just looking at the uh telegram chats there so like you know maybe there was some bombing and there was there uh, or maybe the not the bombing let's talk about something more positive so some territories were re liberated already and there they have the family and they are quite excited and they saw it and they didn't hear you so that's why to provide extra instructions would be quite all right and it's not about the rules here we're talking precisely about instructions isaac use is the answer always like that but don't overdo them because sometimes they might sometimes students might look at you and just like are you stupid or something you just told us that we have three minutes so but again they will not say this to you but it must be like 
felt through the atmosphere, through the rapport that you have got through it. And the last point that I want to make about this interaction type is the instructor's present. I really presence and I really like this comment about I feel that they see me and I'm more than a square in a zoom. If the student feels needed, if the student feels that his needs are met, then they will be with the cameras, then they will be more interactive. Even when you have the special set of rules, I mean, the, the camera on, you are muted when you are not asked, you have the virtual big background, but please make it appropriate, and etc., etc., and they feel that they will be heard, everything will be smooth, you will get the results that you want, you will get the thing that you are actually looking for, some interaction type of thing there. So there are lots of things, like lots of little details, especially if we're talking about the preteens and teens, it's just like the best age out there and you are there for them. You are there for them to try, to go on, to go further for the, for the best of theirs. If we're talking about the other tips that were suggested by the students, again, this is the California students that they were asked during the uh, COVID, like what they liked during the emergency state learning and about the remote learning. So they liked asynchrony, they liked flexibility, they liked to have cameras on, they had to have little breaks in the lesson. So they don't like to have Zoom uh, lectures, they like to have it more like face to face. However, you can record yourself and put yourself on the, on the YouTube and it will be just fine. So again, you can see this little thing, you will get this presentation, that's why you can go through a little bit more details to this. But if we're talking a bit more about the practical parts, so we're going to talk with you a little bit about the boards. One of the newest boards is the Zoom whiteboard. It's really cool for the interaction between the students and it's good for the uh, interaction of the synchronous learning. So like, as I told you before, I'm not using Google Meet or I, I'm not using the Microsoft Teams and you can find a lot of other analogies, but Zoom Whiteboard is really cool. First of all, it is free. Second of all, it is saved for the rest of your life there and all the people can be interacting with this. It's the newest feature, you can look it up, it's near, uh, it is actually, if you have the Russian version of Zoom, uh, it's called the Skype Yevlenyi, like at least I have it like this, and then you press on it and there's the Zoom whiteboard, it's the same as Mira, but it's provided by Chinese government. <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking, but still about Chinese government, but still it's really cool uh, for the interaction, for building up the little projects and everything. However, I'm not the fan of Miro, I have never been, and I have not actually tested it enough, I mean about Zoom whiteboard, but one thing that I can tell you at once, that those who want to interact freely in this Zoom whiteboard and to have access to it after the lesson as well, they have to be a registered user of Zoom. It can be done through Google account, I think like you know already how to do it, So, but it can be done and uh, here we have not so many, um, I'd say, facilities for the children, I mean for the young learners, this is more for the adults and for the teenagers, probably for preteens, because they have like some notes there, but still it's quite possible. Right now, if we're talking with you about some other boards out here, we're going to talk about my love out here, it's the gem board. Uh, now Rock has a separate, uh, as far as I remember, there was a man providing activities on the gem board. It's like free. It doesn't have any unnecessary stuff. It can be interactive in pairs. It can be interactive in three, in third, in groups, individually, whatever. On the screenshots, you actually can see uh, some of my students from the beginning of the year. Uh, they had given their permission for the photos, so like everything is fine there, right? So they were telling about their summers, what they did, what they saw, their photos, what they actually opened up for themselves. And they were discussing it in peers, in the breakout rooms, and you can actually go and look and see how, how they are discussing. And you can see like, for example, over here, so here are two people discussing, here are two Two people discussing there's one person just looking for something i don't know so and all the rest of it please take a look at the gem board it's much easier than it seems and it is much uh, simpler to use the kids love it the teenagers love it and i think that it is much better than mirror again 
because it doesn't have unnecessary things. Plus, it's free. Plus, you can provide the uh, access to it as a usual Google document. So simple as it is. If we're talking about the other parts here, I want to show you one more a wonderful thing which is called auto draw it can be used with the young learners it can be used with the adult learners it can be used with lots of things but take a look what i want to show it to you here so first of all when you open it up you can see that there is a white like paper basically you can change the size of the paper the way you want so basically you can use it like this you have the white paper then you always, and I think like I'm pretty sure that you do the same thing as I do. So you are taking some color, for instance, black, and you say to your children, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not the artist, but try to guess what am I drawing? And you're going to start like this and something there and there will be the eye and there will be the nose here right and they will be like oh but that's a lion but it's very um not nice lion or something it's very crooked there yeah that's why we can use here the auto draw you can use here again the circle you can go with something here you can go with the eye the eye the nose and voila you are the artist this is a wonderful tool to do it with your kids to do it with the teenagers for the storytelling for providing a lot of different stuff that you want for the students one more thing which is really cool about that so they have drawn there so probably they have written also like lion something like that so it's just a really cool part in this way so you can use it for dictations take a look we have got a type part and you could say aha so let it be safari or something there so then it's gonna be something like i don't know uh desert or whatever you have it here yes yeah, so like depending on the topic of course they can type they can write they can fill it in with some other color so let's put it as a purple i don't know like for some reason oh that's not pretty color so let's Let's put it back to white, right? So like it's just something there. So this is one of the cases. Another thing that you need to remember that you can actually move your objects here, like whatever you want. So you want to put lion over here and stuff. And how to show it to you, how to show it to the teacher. Remember, we talked with you about interaction in the Telegram chats. We're talking with you about interaction with the other students there. So we have over here three little lines. You put them there, you put share, and just here will be a link. Just for some time it's preparing. You see, copy a link, and if we're opening it up, so like you will see this particular picture. You will see who is that. So like if you're using this for the dictations, you can actually ask them, just don't forget to write your name. Well, of course, they at first will forget about it, but don't forget to write your name. If they accidentally close this uh, li uh, this auto draw board on their stuff there on their computer, they can reopen it and it will be saved. The progress will be saved there. So if the kid doesn't provide it, you will be able actually to ask the parents, "Can you please do the screenshot and send uh, and send it to me?" And it will be here and here and here. So this is just like one another thing here. If we talk about this, like auto draw again, it's like one of my favorite activities. And again, teenagers, tweens, preteens, teen, like adults sometimes, like depending on what you want. So again, depending on your goals of the lesson, depending what you are about to share with them and what result you want to keep for this. Then I want to show you another thing. I have been talking about this. I don't know, like about like millions of times. It has similar kind of... Um, to the sims uh, provider so like we're talking with you right now about the emoji maker you can use it for english you can use it for emotions you can use it for the stories and everything just make sure that it actually is working with you like right now because like sometimes it is a little bit glitchy so you can see that you have got a face you have got i don't know like some eyes you have got some mustache and some like other eyes let it be here 
So let it be like that, like an evil Kozak here. It's a great tool for the kids. It's a great tool for interacting with them about their emotions or something. Sometimes they might interconnect with you and tell you like, oh, I don't feel quite quite good i'm sorry i don't want to be here right now so like let's talk about something else you can start the activity with this and they will be like showing you like that and you can ask and what about this little uh smiley face why is he so i don't know like angry or whatever and he would be telling like mom didn't give him the i don't know like ice cream whatever so like something like that might happen here so just in case for you it's a good good tool for yourself to use during the classes it's again like a filler like a bra ice breaker like a warmer it can be used for any kind of stuff plus it gives a little bit more interaction they can do it in pairs because here you can actually create one more po a boy here or girl so like they will be sitting beside you make a story make the uh i don't uh, i think that you know this one like guess the cartoon guess the sentence by the emoji and here you can use any of those like there are lots of them and it's just like a wonderful tool to use again kids teens twins like all the other uh, all the other age categories in this case one more thing is that I want you to int introduce it to you. It's like the Voki handouts. You don't need to buy it to use it. It's just like a really cool stuff. What I want to show you is the one that was prepared for you today by yours truly. And here we have... I hope you work. Yeah. Everyone is Ukrainian these days. Everyone is Ukrainian these days. So please remember that you can add in here any absolutely any avatar so you can create absolutely random one so you can put here as the randomizer choose i don't know like ukrainian choose like i don't know like medusa or someone there so like oh no let's choose another one <laughs> so let it be the japanese lady there so you can actually use the monsters here too so like it could be i don't know like this heracle or something like that hercules or someone like that but what's cool about that is that you can actually type in any words that you want them to say to your students it can be for the storytelling it can be for the short dictations it can be for the differences that are out there for example you could say um happy teacher is a happy person let it be like that so like we will be happy with you let's try and happy teacher is a happy person and you see like he was speaking speaking in the language like in the person's name so like let's try james voice happy teacher is a happy person and what if we are using the robot voice for example happy teacher is a happy person yeah so that's what it is like that is what you you can use it for the uh, every single other word it's like the voki yeah so it's a really cool creator and you can change the backgrounds here you can change the clothes you can make the stories you can tell like what's going on there and actually you can save it and however as you could see like from my dino which was in the beginning over here so to save it up to your computer you have to register and to register you have to pay something but for the lesson it's just more than enough it's really cool one so yeah you will get the all the links to these websites like in the end of the presentation plus you will have it like a little bit later there right so this is the Voki, and it's like really similar to the storytelling to the other guys here and it's really really cool resource for the kids like i do recommend it they love it and it's just like one of the best things there another thing that i want to show it to you is my love for the rest of my life it's the interactive presentations but oh surprise surprise not in the general in the canva but in the generally generally is a website where you can create these particular presentations or find the ready-made ones personally i use the ready-made ones sometimes i modify them during the classes there so but it depends what you want like i want to show you just one of them the one that we're using with the little kids it's very interactive and you remember that we have to set the routine with the kids every single lesson we are starting with them what day is it today today is thursday what season is today today is summer are you sure oh no it's autumn and etc etc this is not made by me it is made by somebody there who was in spain how do i know that i go to this little slide and you can see that here they have something like spanish 
Spanish language instead of Ukrainian. But it doesn't matter at this point because you don't go there. Here you can actually add YouTube links just for the sake of the revelation there, right? So like you are looking at the different songs if you need to refresh and stuff. You can create it on your own. It's $6 a month, if I'm not mistaken, the lowest package there. And it's very interactive and you create your own. However, on this website, it is really, really sad moment about this search. The search is awful. It's even worse than on the word wall. So that's why sometimes if you want to do it, you are just going, for example, present simple. And there will be like generally. Yes, yeah, so like you see that I have looked it up there. So I opened the first one and let's see. Aha, so this creator has it like this. Let's play. It will be the presentation. There will be something like a test and stuff and stuff. What's cool about this presentation is that sometimes you can make it in the form of the board games, you can make it in the form of the, the passport and stuff like that. So, for instance, I found this wonderful game about like going to London. You see, my name is Asha, for example. I was born on the 1st of April. I am a Ukrainian, of course, and I live in Poltava, Ukraine. So, like, this is just a little part. They are writing it and you are doing it together with them. And you can see that here is a lot of different pictures. Here are some interactivities there. I want to find it here. So, like, you can add here some reading, true or false. Uh, also, I think, like, here you can add, yes, ISL collective modes there. So, it's just really fun and it's a lot of things going on. Really cool one, genially. Uh, please look it up uh, there are lots of them so like you can see that it looks as if you are running the presentation but oh no this is by somebody there are a lot of options for example you could say about the escape room you can see the quest you can see the test you can see just the interactive presentation with when we're talking about the calendar about the way they do the well about the way they stay here so like it's just a uh, like a little guide in this particular way when we talk with you about generally, again, I can sing greatest songs to this and I do recommend to use it to everyone because it's like even for free, you can find a lot of great resources for online and reuse them and set the routine and everything will be fine because you will set the result for your students. You know what you will get by the end of the class, by the end of the program there. If we talk with you about other stuff there, I really want us to remember about those two things that we are talking with you. It's about the Mentimeter and about the Google Forms. These two particular websites were using not only just for the sake of the using. Google Forms are used before for the tests. Sometimes right now I'm using more than Rock and sometimes the ad forms. It's a little bit different. But Mentimeter is actually a great tool for providing the feedback on the site or it can be providing for the less like for the rates you know like there is something like rate these activities the hobbies the one that you like more the one that you like less and just around the the cases in this particular way so what i'd like you to do right now if you have the opportunity my dear uh, ladies and gentlemen please get connected to the uh, mentimeter.com you can go by the QR code here or you can go to the menti.com and enter the code. And I would like you to write what do you think about this webinar that we are having with you right now. Any adjective, anything like that. Then I will show you a little bit more of what is it about this particular way. So like, let me put it back with the QR codes. So please get connected and we will see it, uh, look it up for that matter of fact. So you can remember that you're using the phone, you are scanning it, you are showing it in the browser and you're writing the answer to the question. It will actually be really easy. You can enter as many words as you want. So you can say something like interesting or not interesting, boring or I don't know, like I will put it submitting here. So just for you to show what's going on. So I have got the interesting part there. So if you want, please join in. You don't need to submit there. Fantastic, interesting, amazing. I'm happy, all right. So like you have the you have the access there. So again, if you didn't have the access to the QR code, take a look at the top. You see menti.com, use code 23015095. And this will stay with you for a very long time. 
I'm happy about that. All right, so like we are creating the word cloud. As you can see in the Mentimeter, there is, it's like the slide that we are having with you. It's going with a lot of um, interactions, so like animations and stuff. You can use it for word clouds. You can use it for the questionnaire. You can use it for the uh, ratings part. So like I want to show you just like another one. So for the teachers, we're going to have Mentimeter.com. So not just like menti.com because menti.com it's more for the uh, children like i would say for the uh, not, not for the children but for the students for the response for the interviewers like the one who, that we're interviewing in this spot so you can see it here a lot of helpful facts a lot of practical activities happy about that 13 people have answered wonderful how to create that? You go to the mentimeter.com, you create a new presentation, you give it a name, any kind of name there. Yes, yeah, so, and you go to the free part. Again, I'm using the free version of this actual wonderful presentation here. So you will see that you need to use the type. You can use it for the multiple choice, for the word cloud, for the open-ended questions, for the scales, for the ranks, for the different Q&As and stuff like that. However, I'm using the most multiple choice, scales, ranking, and sometimes the open-ended, mostly the word clouds. It's like the best part ever. You enter here the question. So, for example, what is your name, right? And uh, basically, you write how many uh, how and many entries by participant you can get, and just go on with this. You pl press present, and it will show it to you like this. So, like it will show to you like to the full screen. You just press escape so that it can be like that. You might hide the answers while the people are still answering. You see, like you see how many people below are answering. So it's 16 people. And then you can show the results there. You can show the instruction. You can show the little comments that you have. Sometimes you can put the picture on top of it and it will be just working for you. It will be just opening up and people will be just given a lot of a lot of uh, feedback most likely for it. And again, this is just like one of the ways. Please remember why you would like to do this. Why do you want to do this, this in the other way? Because like it depends. It really depends for different things. For instance, here you could see I just want to show you real quick about the ratings. So, like, remember, we had social issues in the outcomes and we had to rate. And you can see, like, we had some discussion around that. It's just really cool activity to have just for yourself, just for the sake of anything around. Google Forms, again, you can use it for the service. You can use it for the tests. You can use it for the different, uh, I don't know, like, simple activities here. So, just another thing there. If we talk about the other stuff you can go to the qr code that you will see in the other corner in the other corner there yes so like and uh, it will get you to the digo it will take you to the note where you will see much more uh, theoretical part if you want to dig into the social interaction between students between teachers there yeah and there will be also the links to all the resources that i have been talking with you today i mean about the uh, I got Woki, about the emoji maker, about a lot of other things. And just there are some contacts of mine, Yevgeshka Kostenka everywhere, Yevhenia Kostenka on Facebook, uh, and my email. But I, if you want to contact me, please don't get offended if I do respond to you quite long, because sometimes I do have lessons. During the lessons I don't respond, and if I read it, I might forget about this. So, like, please text me once again, if I haven't answered your little question there so please feel free right now to get me the questions by the way we all have got the power the power of studies the power of teaching even in the ERT emergency remote teaching not just remote teaching there so please feel free to ask the questions I'm quite waiting for them so because like there are I think like there might be some and I will be happy to give to you some comments on that Yay! I'm happy that it was useful, right? So lots of things there. Okay, yeah. Right, so like, again, there are lots of resources, there are lots of things around. Uh, I'm not showing you also like a lot of other educational games, something like, I don't know, 
uh, Curious George, or there are a lot of other games connected to the phonics, like readers. Um, recently, I have found, like, if we're talking about the uh, younger learners, I think that I can show it to you. It's ABC Linguist. I hope that most of you have seen it already. And, like, I hope that it was shown already for the Nush, because it's, like, a wonderful resource. You can see that I don't have such little students, but you see alphabet, something's wrong there, right? So, like, we've got a lot of different guys there. For instance, we are st learning I, right? And we can... E. 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 And we have got... Igloo. Igloo. E. Right? Ill. Indian. And I think like you can catch what I mean by this. So just like reading another phonics part. Yeah. So and it's absolutely free. Moreover, it's Ukrainian. Alphabet. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, so like that's a good sound there. Right. So but it's really cool. I saw such a thing on the Oxford Phonics World website and I'm pretty happy that Ukrainians have done it as well. And I do like that in here they again don't have anything unnecessary. They have everything that is needed just to the point, just to the the later part. Another part that I want to show to you is like, if we're talking about the gem boards again, there are so many of them that you can use. Like, um, I just showed you some of the little things I can show you. For instance, Academy Star Imperative. Yeah, we have got the beginning, let, and they know already, let's stay at home. Yeah, so like, oh, let's play basketball and stuff. Then they are spread into peers and they are doing, aha, uh -huh, so like, stay safe. We're putting it here, dance for the Imperative listen for the imperative and you can move them again so don't break so you don't break it don't run don't run don't scream and others lots of things you can do it again there is a separate webinar about jamboard on the now rock so you can actually go on for that and try to like feel free to watch it i think like it's somewhere there on the on the youtube channel too so, yeah, if you've got, again, any more questions, please, I'm having, like, one more minute for us to join. And hopefully that all of the links would be useful to you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, I'm happy that you loved it. Yeah, so, and uh, I do hope that these were quite useful links to you. Please feel free to contact me if you need any of those extra links or something like that but on digo you can find it or by this qr code you will find it somewhere on the uh somewhere on your email i think or on your account it will be provided with the materials of this conference or intense course there and i'll see you probably sometime soon so please don't forget to have the power and you will be the power of everything around so just yeah feel free and stay safe, please. All right. So, like, it's just a lot of thin there. So, because, like, again, don't forget to go to the shelter if there is the air alert in your, in your region. So, it's quite, quite important. So, have a nice evening. Stay safe and see you very, very soon. Bye!